Hello, this is Paul from HackingWithSwift.com. I want to walk you through a brief primer on UI Stack View, a new component inside iOS 9 that's super cool and super easy to use. In the next 10 minutes or so, we'll see what's changed, why, and how you can start using it immediately. But first off, a brief primer on how we got to where we are today. In the old days of iOS layout, we used a thing called auto-resizing masks, and these were springs and struts that told iOS how views should resize when needed. And that worked great when we only had one kind of device, one shape of device. The original iPhone, 3G, 3GS, 4, and 4S were all the same size screen. But of course, that was not going to last. The iPhone 3 and 4 size screens soon became iPhone 5 size screens, which had an extra space along the top. And for this, auto-resizing masks were kind of okay. They just stretched to fit. Then iPhone 6 size screens came along with extra space to the left, right, and above, a lot more above. And now the auto-resizing masks were looking a bit uncertain. And of course, the mammoth iPhone 6 Plus, not shown here to scale, by the way, uh, has lots more space on the left, right, and above. And at this point, quite frankly, auto-resizing masks are not fit for purpose. Now, of course, Apple knew this was going to happen. Just a few months before the iPhone 5 came out, WWDC 2012 happened, and they announced that auto layout was coming to iPhone. And this was cool because it let you, as a developer, describe the relationship between your objects, their position and their size. And when you throw foreign languages at it, it would resize things appropriately. So super long German words, your labels would resize to fit automatically. And even better, it had a super cool thing called the Visual Format Language, VFL, which let you describe your layouts in ASCII. Best of all though, Apple's designer code, their examples, looked super easy. You could look at them and say, yeah, this looks fantastic. And so when you got home after the conference, you almost certainly thought like me, huh, I'm facing quite a hard layout problem. I know, I'll use auto layout to solve this. And now, almost certainly, you have two problems and an unresolved layout constraint. Now, thinking back to Apple's example code, you probably thought you were making some sort of schoolboy error. I made a typo somewhere here. It's, it's magic. Of course it'll work. It must be me. And then when you realized it wasn't you, you probably tried pleading with Interface Builder to resolve the constraint problems for you. And I suspect the next stage was fighting with Xcode probably writing code to do the layouts rather than using Interface Builder. And after one fight too far, you realize the awful truth about auto layout, which is this. Auto layout makes hard things easy and easy things hard. Which explains why there are so many wrappers around it. Things like Pure Layout and SnapKit are designed to wrap around auto layout to make it simpler. But you carried on fighting and eventually, Eventually, you figured it out. You understood what auto layouts try to do for you, how to use it, and how to get great results. And what happened? Apple happened. WWDC 2014 happened. And in that announcement, amongst many others, they said, we're all about adaptive layouts now. Size classes are the new cool thing. And this was said to a sea of developers of whom not a single one had the first clue what size classes were for, really. You know, why do we need these custom complicated layouts? We've just finally managed to get auto layout to work. And then, just a few weeks ago, as I record this, WWDC 2015 happened. A conference I am now renaming on behalf of the developer community, you bring us your layouts, we'll mess with your head. And true enough, in one slide, and tiny gray text in the bottom corner were two fateful words. Stack view, a new way of doing layouts in iOS. And during the following sessions, Apple actually said we should start all our layouts with a stack view, not with custom auto layout constraints. And so you, the poor developer who thought they finally cracked auto layout, you probably now realized Auto layout may well be the biggest software troll ever perpetuated. 
And chances are you are not too keen about this new stack view thing. You finally cracked auto layout. You maybe, if you're lucky, understand size classes. Why stack view? Well, I'm here to tell you, stack view is easy, stack view is fast, and stack view is good. You're gonna love using stack view. So let's look at it from a very high level first. If you have a stack view occupying the full space of a view, and then place a sub view inside it, you will see this. The sub view will occupy the full space of the stack view. If you add a second sub view, the first one will resize down to make space and the second one will slide in. You can add three or four, they'll make space and slide in. Plus stack views can be nested and work horizontally or vertically. So we can add some more views and again, they'll just slide in. Or you can do custom layouts, it's down to you. So that's how it works visually. But behind the scenes, stack views have a number of important properties. Like you've seen, they can be horizontal or vertical, and they can be nested. You can have stack views inside stack views. And having these two properties alone mean you can make grids. Some horizontal, some vertical, and nested. You can make the iOS calculator, for example. Then they have adjustable distribution. What you saw in those pictures before were the, the stack view subviews all having the same amount of space being used up by them. That's equal layout. But you can also ask for proportional layout, where subviews will stretch or shrink according to their original size. You can add some inter-item spacing, margin between items, and you can, if you want to, animate the adding and removing. It's a free thing. It's done through uh, UI view animation like usual but they are not scrolling. You must place them inside a UI scroll view if you want scrolling. So those are the key six properties of UI stack view, and all six of those will sound very familiar if you've ever done any Android coding, because linear layout has exactly the same six properties, with one key difference. Linear layout was there from Android 1. So, if you want to use UI stack view, great, Here's the least you need to know. First up, it is a non-drawing UI view subclass, by which I mean, if you give it a background color, it'll be ignored. If you override draw rect, it'll be ignored. It does not do drawing. Instead, it's there to do one thing, which is to manage auto layout constraints for you. And it does this using the intrinsic content sizes of its subviews. It'll find that how big the biggest item is, and stretch the others to fit the same space, if that's how you configured it. And because it's doing this constraint stuff for you, you must never touch its subviews array. Now, if I was sitting with you right now, I would say, hold your hand up and say after me, I promise to never touch a UI stack view subviews array. It really is important. So if you wanna use the thing, here is some code in Swift to get you started. So we this create a stack view, it makes it vertical so things flow down the way, and it adds it to our current view. Then it loops from one to 100, creating UI buttons, and it calls add arranged subview. That's how you add a subview to a stack view. You do not use add subview, because that's touching the subviews array directly, which you do not do, of course. This thing will add it to subviews and also update the constraints, optionally with animation. If you want the code in Objective-C, here you go. But quite frankly, you should really be questioning your life choices because Swift is where it's at, sorry. There is one big gotcha, i.e. a big catch to using stack view. It is intentional, it's by design, so be careful and work your way around it. It is this, if you want to remove a subview, you call remove arranged subview and it will stop showing the child view, but it does not delete the child view from your view hierarchy. This is important because it means you can add a subview, remove, add, remove, add, remove, and it will not keep creating and deleting views. You just reuse the same one. If you really do want something gone, deleted for real, you must also call remove from superview. So you call remove arranged subview first and then remove from superview. If you do not do this, you will hemorrhage RAM. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking UI stack view sounds great. You can basically forget that size classes and auto layout ever existed. You can toss them away and move on with a clean sheet using UI stack view. 
Well, I'm sorry to say that's not how Apple sees it. Instead, they see auto layout as a real foundational technology on which size classes are built and now UI stack view. They iterate and increment and build towards a greater goal. And that greater goal is iPad multitasking. You see, if you use auto layout and size classes, you will get good iPad multitasking for free. It will just work. If you use auto layout and size classes and UI stack view, you will get great iPad multitasking out of the box. And here's why. If you override the trait collection did change method on a view controller, you can change the axis of a stack view based on the size class. For example, here's some code in Swift. If we are moving to compact, become a vertical stack view, otherwise a horizontal stack view. So you can change the stack view's axis whenever you need to based on the size of your view controller, which is great for saying going from a full screen app down to a split screen half app or a one third app or who knows what. You can change your layouts just by changing the axis of the stack view and iOS will do all the work for you. So if your boss now says, this is fantastic, I, I want multitasking for an app now. Brilliant, that's fantastic. Please use UI stack view, it is wonderful. But remember, it's only available from iOS 9 when it's released in, what, September time, October time, all being well. So, please use the new Swift 2 hash available or pound available syntax to check for the presence of iOS 9 and then use stack views. Otherwise, cry sad, sad tears, you have not got UI stack view. However, if you are in the cry, cry, sad, sad, tears, tears department, don't worry. Backports are coming. People are working very hard to find backports for UI stack view. The most prominent to date is called OA stack view. And this has almost all features from UI stack view already implemented and it works back to iOS 7. So you get 7, 8 and 9 support for the same code. And it's in CocoaPods. So you can just do pod OA stack view and get going immediately. Sadly, it does not work in Carthage yet. It's a real shame. Carthage is very nice, but I'm sure it's coming soon. So for more information, please see my book, Hacking with Swift. It's online for free at hackingwithswift.com. In particular, go to slash Swift 2 for the new Swift 2 changes or slash iOS 9 for the iOS 9 changes. I've released lots of free tutorial stuff on Swift 2 and iOS 9, including stack views, core spotlight, the new Safari services, and more. And they're all free online at hackingwithswift.com. Please go and check them out. As a reminder, you can, of course, talk to me directly on Twitter. I am at Two Straws. If you have questions, comments, feedbacks, uh, get in touch. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you have hate mail, uh, by all means, please talk to someone else. Take care and have a lot of fun with UI Stack View.